challenge me on that. Honestly, challenge me. Challenge me. All right. Hey dancers, it's Kirsten. Welcome back to the Confident Dancer YouTube channel. Today, I'm here to talk to you guys who feel behind. You feel like you are behind in your progress. Maybe it's that you started at six years old, but you just feel like you're consistently behind in your class and you're not good enough. Or you're just constantly playing catch up, trying to be good enough for maybe a professional career or whatever it is, and you're just stuck in this narrative of I'm behind. Or maybe you might have clicked on this video because you started later in life, maybe as a teenager, maybe later than that in your adult years. And you have this idea in your mind that you're behind and that's been weighing on you. I really want to encourage you with this video because I really believe there's so much more to each of us than the age where we started ballet or dance, whatever style that you do. And also, I've just seen so many dancers and I've worked with dancers individually who've been carrying that narrative with them for years and years and years. I'm behind. I'm always behind. And it ends up stealing their confidence away, stealing their joy. So let's talk today about if you feel behind, what can you do about it to embrace where you're at and move forward confidently? Point number one is that Yes, you cannot change what factually happened in your past. You can't go back reverse time and change what age you started ballet at. You can't. So, all right, if you can't change that, what are we supposed to do? I want you to realize that you can always change the way you think about anything, including things that factually happened in the past that you can't change, okay? So again, even if you can't factually change what happened, you can change the way you think about it. So here's how you can put this into practice. Realize that whatever age you started at, if you can't change it, how can you change the way you're thinking about it? Are you thinking about it like it's such a problem, like it's always this stamp on your forehead of not good enough because you're older than everyone in your class or whatever it is. If that's the truth, then how can you change the way you think about your starting age or your current skill level for your age right now to actually work for you? Because what I wanna advocate for on your behalf is the importance of the way you feel every day. Sure, you can carry this story with you every day that you're behind, you're not good enough, all this stuff. But if that's making you feel inadequate, frustrated, discouraged, then let's change that narrative. Again, if you can't change exactly where you're at right now or what age you started at, you can still change the way you think about it. So I wanna say it's so important how you think in order to influence how you feel every day. If you feel better, I can guarantee you will be dancing better. We all look back on our days and we say, you know, I just wanna look back on my life and know that I was happy and that I did something meaningful with it. Well, how much of a waste of your life is it to feel miserable every day if you can help it just by changing the story you're telling yourself about your current skill level and age? So you can change what you think your age or skill level means about you. Maybe if you feel you're behind, then ask yourself, how could this be an opportunity? How could this be an opportunity for me to be motivated to work harder or to be motivated to stand out and be comfortable with that, like own where you're at? Maybe this is your opportunity to practice radical self-acceptance. And if you step into that opportunity, that is a life skill. That's a mentality that will serve you for the rest of your life in everything that you do. Obviously, I'm a mindset coach. I think the way we think is so important. And our mindset permeates not only our experience and our results in dance, but in our entire life experience. And what is more important than creating a quality life experience for yourself? Like, not much, <laughs> not much in my opinion. Or maybe you can transform your narrative to say, I started late and I think that's really admirable. I wanna just honor and admire myself for a second for doing something that's a little different, you know, for being willing to be the oldest and tallest in the class. Or I wanna just celebrate myself for a second for being willing to be the least skilled, least experienced dancer in the room. That takes courage, okay? So why not see yourself for the courage that takes and the dedication, see it as an opportunity to celebrate those things and also create a new narrative about what this means about you. 
Number two is don't carry this as an identity for yourself. Why I say this is psychologically our identity, our sense of identity is one of the strongest influencers of the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act, and therefore our results. It is even stronger than our beliefs. And our beliefs are extremely powerful. So if you are walking around in your life with this identity of I'm a late starter, I am behind, or that belief, even this is a belief, I will always be behind. Even that label on yourself, it is going to shape the opportunities you feel worthy of pursuing. And obviously, if you don't feel even worthy of pursuing an opportunity, then it's an automatic no that you're giving to yourself. It's going to start to become the reason like why you're not getting the results you want, why you're behind. It can start to become this like this prison and even this crutch of like how you see yourself and why I say crutch is it can start to become the reason like, oh, this didn't happen. It's, they don't like me because I started late. I didn't get in, oh, it must be because I, I'm behind, I started late. Whereas that might not actually be true. And you're focusing on something, again, that isn't going to change necessarily. I do wanna validate there's a difference between starting late and feeling behind because you started late. Like, why do we even think that being an adult and starting ballet or or even like being a teenager, it's, why do we think that's so late? Like it just is what it is. Congrats, you get the privilege of participating in this beautiful fun art form. Why don't we just like welcome people with open arms that came whenever they came because that's awesome, you know? Anyway, I'm really getting fired up now. Going back to the point around identity, instead of identifying yourself as a dancer who's behind, why not start to let go of that sense of identity and shift into one that is actually empowering and actually true? I am a person who's capable of progress. I'm capable of growth. I'm capable of achieving what I want. I am a hard worker. I am competent, smart, whatever it is. Like shift into one that actually works for you. And by shifting your sense of identity, you will then make it much easier to see those qualities that you're calling out in yourself feel different, think differently, act differently, and achieve different results. Hey friend, I'm gonna interrupt this video for a very worthy cause. I wanna share with you, if you haven't heard yet, that the Confident Dancer Collective, my new group coaching program, will be opening its doors for enrollment very soon. So the Confident Dancer Collective is a six week group coaching program that will provide you the opportunity to go from struggling with self-doubt and insecurities and fears that are getting in your way of feeling and dancing your best to actually having the tools and the resources and the frameworks, the understanding to be the confident dancer you want to be. I know that for so many dancers, the process of building confidence feels vague. It feels like some people are just confident and then other people just aren't. That is not true. Confidence is truly something that everyone can develop within themselves, no matter if you're the most skilled or the least skilled dancer in the room. And as a mindset coach, I am so passionate about breaking these topics down, like how do we build confidence and actually making it possible and understandable and clear for you so that you can actually feel like, yes, this is for me. I can be confident. I know how to start building that within myself. So if you want to be a more confident dancer and this next year, you really want to start out being on fire, then join me and this lovely group of like-minded dancers who will be there to grow alongside you. You'll have weekly Zoom calls with me where I'll be sharing teaching facilitating group discussions, having an opportunity for dancers to get little one-on-one -on -one coaching moments. And so we can all learn and grow and encourage each other and learn from each other. So join this program. If this piques your interest, all you have to do is just click the link in the description, theconfidentdancer.com, and you can learn more about all this program includes. Start now by getting on the wait list so you're the first to know when enrollment opens on December 14th. It closes December 23rd, and then we start in January in the first week. So learn more, get on that wait list, and I can't wait to work with you. All right, let's get into the rest of the video. Okay, point number three is to examine how this could actually be an opportunity for you. I know I'm a broken record. I say that basically in all my videos because it applies to everything. You can see everything as an opportunity. Everything, like challenge me on that. Honestly challenge me, challenge me. If you examine how this can be an opportunity, you can start to see like, oh, or even an advantage, an advantage or an opportunity. It could be an actual advantage 
that you started late or that you are the least skilled dancer in the room because you have the greatest opportunity for growth in that room. If you're already at the top, then you are the example other people are following. If you feel like you're at the bottom, instead of just condemning yourself for that, say, great, within this year that I'm in this class where I feel like the worst, I have the greatest opportunity to make that leap towards the top. Cool. I have the greatest opportunity to look around at examples of what I can become. Whereas the people at the top, they're just looking backwards. You know, maybe they feel great about themselves. Good for them. But you have an opportunity to grow so much more. Next point is to just remember that if you can't change it, own it. So if there are aspects of your past you can't change, like you change the genres, maybe from like competition into jazz late. Great. You can't change that. Own it. <laughs> if you can't change the age you started at, own it. All right. If you can't immediately right now change your skill level, even if you started at six, whatever, and you just feel like you're behind, we always have that next best step available. There's always something we can do to move forward. And the best place to start is owning where you're at now and saying, great, I accept where I'm at now. I'm going to just own that that's what it is without judgment and just ask myself, okay, what's the next best step? What's the next thing I can do instead of focusing on all the baggage of what you can't do, how you're not good enough? That's going to be such a better use of your time and energy. So the next point I have is really some tough love. I already kind of insinuated it a little bit, but oh my gosh, it's so important. I've seen this happening in the individual coaching clients I've had before, and it's really powerful to notice when this is happening, which is don't use this narrative that you're behind or that you started late or whatever as an excuse or as the constant reason in your mind why you don't have what you want. It can be so easy to hold this around with you like it's the scapegoat, it's the reason. Like for me, it used to be turnout. Oh, that teacher must not like me because I'm not turned out. Oh, I must not have gotten into that summer program because I'm not turned out. Like it was always the thing in my head. And a lot of, you know, the thing with my turnout is it was like biological <laughs> anatomical limitations I was experiencing. So there was a certain degree to where I could change and improve, and then a certain degree to where I would actually never be that dancer who was like standing like this. It's just not going to be me, but I was carrying it around like, oh, that must be why, oh, that must be why. Instead of staying open-minded and saying, I'm not going to carry around that story for myself. Instead, what we can do is stay open-minded and say like, okay, again, I am at where I'm at. When you have an open mind and you're not carrying around that story, like that's the constant reason why you don't have what you want, then you'll actually be free to focus more on what you can do, what actually might be better feedback for you, more useful feedback that you can open yourself up to or give yourself. So I always like to say, instead of focusing on the reasons why you don't have what you want, focus on the results you want and the next thing you can do to get there. So results over reasons, people. We can always say, oh, this is why I don't. This is why I can't. Let's get rid of those whys. And instead ask, okay, what am I going to do about it? That's going to be such a better use of your energy. The very last point I will make here is one about trust. I am such an advocate for having a lifestyle in which you, it's defined by the level of trust you have. Trust in yourself, trust in things beyond yourself, trust in other people, like just having a trusting attitude takes you so far in life. So I always like to say this is a mantra that I have and carry with me in my own life, which is that I believe that everyone has what they need to take their next best step. And I also happen to believe that everyone has exactly what they need to walk into the opportunities that are meant for them. Now, you know, meant for them, it's kind of a worldview belief if you don't believe that, that's okay. At the very least, you can take that step to say, I believe that I have what I need to take my next best step. So when you feel confused, when you feel like your back's up against a wall and you're like, I'm just not good enough and that's just how it is. And just remind yourself, I have everything I need to walk into the opportunities that are meant for me. I have everything that I need to take my next best step. Okay, and just by putting that trust at the forefront of your mind, I promise you the next action step will become clear to you and it will be so much more comforting and empowering to focus on what you can do next instead of 
you know, all the reasons that you can't do X, Y, Z and you're not good enough. So dancers, I really hope that this video was very encouraging to you. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will be excited to see you in next week's video. So give this one a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe so you don't miss next week's video and I'll see you then. Bye.